Hey, what's going on guys? So uh, today I just want to go over my New Jersey EDC. What does that mean? Well, I live in Pennsylvania, if you're not familiar. I actually grew up in Jersey, spent the first half of my life there. Um, and the second half of my life, I've lived in Pennsylvania. Of course, the laws on guns and knives and what's considered weapons and what's not, um, it could be very, you know, I don't know, kind of discouraging because some people just don't understand what they're allowed to have, what they're not allowed to have. Uh, in general, if you just mind your business, there's no reason for a police officer to know what you have in your pockets or what you don't. But there's those rare situations where maybe uh, what's in your pockets does get exposed, whether you were planning on it or not. So it's good to always abide by the laws, know and understand the laws that are around you when you travel. So, uh, you know, New Jersey being a lot more restrictive than Pennsylvania, it's always on my mind if I have to go to New Jersey or Connecticut or New York State, I, I really have to focus on what's in my pockets. It's very uh, normal for me to grab a gun, sometimes two guns, you know, when I leave the house. And that's not okay certain places. So I have to be very mindful of stuff like that. So anyway, I went to Jersey. Uh, I uh, carpooled with my parents. Uh, we went down there for two days, one night. Um, and uh, the purpose of the trip really was just to see some family members at a cemetery. Uh, my grandmother, God rest her soul, uh, is buried out there in Jersey because obviously my family grew up in Jersey. A lot of different family members as well out there. While we were there, I also saw my uh, cousin Jesse's uh, spot in a mausoleum. Uh, it was a very good, purposeful trip. It's something me and my dad talked about for a while that we wanted to do, and we just went and did it. I've never actually seen my grandmother's grave before, and my father hasn't been there in years because it's just very emotional for him to see that. But anyway, we went ahead and did the trip, had a really good time reminiscing, looking at our old house, my parents' old houses, and my dad went to his old job and talked to his old boss and stuff. It was, it was really cool. You know, my wife got to see a lot of this stuff for the first time as well. So the four of us had a really good trip. Now, in most cases, I can travel through certain states with my gun if the ammunition is at a separate location in the car and everything's locked up and all that kind of stuff. But technically, staying overnight is not really going through the state. And, you know, the law, I'm not a lawyer. I don't understand everything to a T. And even though I may interpret it one way, it's always good to play it safe and, and just make sure you're abiding by all the laws. Most people just don't know what they're allowed to do and what they're not allowed to do. But I find it's very important. It'd be extremely rare that a police officer would have to look at what I have in my pockets, but you just don't know. You know what I mean? I'm not planning on having interactions with police officers in other states, but maybe there's an accident and then a cop shows up on the scene. Maybe I have a pocket clip to a knife I'm not supposed to have that he sees. Maybe I have a, a little bulge, you know, on my waistband where a gun is that is not supposed to be there. I heard of a story because um, I'm kind of northeastern Pennsylvania and I'm not too far from New York or New Jersey or Connecticut. And I heard of a story of a guy who went over by the border. He was just getting gas, which is not all that far from me. I've been in the area many, many times where uh, Pennsylvania meets New Jersey and New York. And he was in New Jersey, literally like three or 400 feet over the border getting gas because it was cheaper there. Got into a fender bender, happened to be carrying. You know, I think he was concealed carrying, but he had a, a very visible bulge under his, uh, his shirt, you know, where the gun was and was getting a police report done. The officer noticed the gun, asked him if he had a firearm on him, didn't think any of it, you know, just said, yeah, sure, but well, I live in Pennsylvania. Uh, and the cop had to arrest him, literally arrested him. Uh, I believe he lost his CCW in Pennsylvania. I don't know all the details. I heard the story through a person. Uh, I can't verify any of this, but it makes total sense. It's very common for people who carry in Pennsylvania every single day to travel, you know, to these other states. They're not staying very long. They're not deep into the state. They're not moving there or anything but they just forget, you know, and I've definitely been in those situations where I forgot. And uh, that's not cool, you can't forget. So I have to be very mindful of these type of things. And specifically with an actual trip, uh, you know, I would make sure I didn't bring any kind of firearms or anything. So my EDC changed up, that's the point. That's what I wanna talk about a little bit. So before I actually get into this, I wanna look at New Jersey law. So this is a printout from uh, AKTI, which is American Knife and Tool Institute. They are essentially the NRA of knives. I highly recommend you check them out if you believe in them and want to back them. Of course, you can donate, become a member. It really helps with knife law stuff. They do get some stuff done. Um, so I'm not gonna read this whole thing. You could just, if you search New Jersey knife laws, they'll come up like within the first five or six results on Google, okay? So check it out for yourself. But I just highlighted a couple things here. So New Jersey knife laws, it's pretty vague, just like a lot of places, but we know New Jersey is pretty restrictive. They're extremely restrictive on their firearms policies and stuff. 
Um, I'd love to get a carry permit in New Jersey. It seems like I can go through the process of applying, but I think, and don't quote me on this, but I think there's like a little over 9 million people in New Jersey and there's a thousand CCW permits. So the likelihood of you actually being accepted, uh, I don't know if it's a little better if you're out of state or if you're in state, but most people just don't get accepted for various different reasons that are completely bogus. Uh, but that is just how it is. If you happen to live in New Jersey, and you have a permit to carry a gun out and about, you can let me know in the comment section or send me a private message somewhere on social media and tell me the process. I'd love to do it. Uh, I never actually applied. I just feel like it's kind of a waste of time, but who knows, maybe I'll do it anyway in the future. Anyway, so at a glance here, New Jersey prohibits the possession without any uh, explainable lawful purpose, end quote. Explainable lawful purpose. Again, that is so subjective up to the officer or the judge that you're talking to. Um, of any gravity knife, switchblade knife, dagger, dirk, stiletto, dangerous knife, or ballistic knife. Now, first of all, dangerous knife. Again, extremely vague. This is some stupid, stupid lawyer law stuff. You know what I'm saying? How do you have a list of specific things and then leave it open with, well, whatever we think is dangerous? That could be literally anything. If you have a Victorinox knife in your pocket, or if you have a, you know, four foot broadsword or something, it doesn't make a difference if they think it's dangerous, right? Just ridiculous to me. Anyway, uh, possession of a weapon in one's home is arguably a lawful purpose. Pocket knives may be carried outside the home except by one having unlawful intent or who possesses the knife for some unlawful purpose. Self-defense beyond the limits of one's home is not a lawful purpose. So this is how I actually interpret this, and I could be right or wrong, this is just my opinion. But they're basically saying that if you're carrying a knife out and about in public, you need a lawful purpose. What that lawful purpose is, again, you could think it's something's a good reason. They're telling you self-defense is not a good lawful reason. They're specifically saying that if you get stopped and for some reason you're checked, um, and you, they're like, why do you have this knife? And you're like, well, I have it for self-defense. That doesn't fly in New Jersey. Now, if you say, hey, I'm going fishing, I have it for fishing, hey, I, I'm a contractor, I just got back from a job, I use it to cut sheetrock, hey, I, you know, I, I don't know. The list goes on and on and on, right? You have to have a reasonable, lawful purpose for having that knife. Now, you could be a knife collector, you could be a knife reviewer, you know? If you happen to have a YouTube channel and you talk about knives, that would be a, a lawful purpose of why you're carrying it because you have to test it out. You can't possibly test something out if you don't carry it and use it, right? Uh, even if you don't have any social media presence talking about knives, you know, maybe you made a couple posts here and there, you know, wink, wink on the, you know, online and, and you're a knife reviewer. Who do they say you're not? You know, just saying. But, you know, a lawful purpose, they don't want to hear you say self-defense, basically. That's what they're saying specifically here. They're also saying, like, in the home, it's a little bit different. But then they go on. It's strange because later on in this paperwork, they're saying, like, gravity knife, switchblade, dagger, dirk, stiletto, a ballistic knife or dangerous knife, whatever. Here they're basically saying that you have to have a reason to have those, but then later on they're basically saying you can't have those, or they're saying with the restrictions, but they don't tell you what kind of restrictions. Again, you can go to the website and read all this information yourself and interpret it your own way. Um, the best uh, explanation that I've come to here is if you mind your business, just like anywhere, not just New Jersey, if you mind your business, the cops probably won't know what type of knife you have. Uh, if you happen to do something else, you get into a fight, you get into an altercation, the cops are called on you, you were uh, drink, you know, drunk driving, who knows what the scenario is, but now the cops are searching you, okay? They're not searching you because you're walking down the street and they saw a pocket clip and they're wondering what's in your pocket. No, you've done something else, and at this point, whether you're guilty or not, they want to search you, and then once they search you and they take knives out, that's where this stuff gets a little bit gray to me because if they think it's dangerous, and again, I've said this a million times, but cops do not know all the laws. That's the job of a lawyer. Just like a lawyer does not know everything cops do. Okay, cops, if they feel threatened by your knife, it does not matter if it's legal or not. Okay, that's something you have to fight in court, not on the side of the street when you're getting arrested. Okay, uh, P.S. If a cop is ever arresting you, do not resist, please. There's a lot of problems in America because people resist arrest and mostly because they think they're innocent, but what you're doing is you're resisting and now you're not innocent. You might be innocent of the crime that they're accusing you of. Maybe you weren't speeding. Maybe you didn't steal that thing from Walmart, but just play along, okay? If you're, you're wrongfully accused of something, you can go ahead and, you know, sue the store or the state later, you know, but 
for your own protection, you probably shouldn't fight back in any way whatsoever. That's just personal opinion. But anyway, what I'm saying is like all these laws and stuff, they only count when you're in court, usually for something else. Cops don't go around randomly asking you what type of knife you have. Now, I say that not living in a city, I'm sure in specific cities and specific areas, perhaps people are targeted if you have a pocket clip and the cops don't like you for whatever reason, maybe they bust your chops, maybe they, they search you, and like I said, all that stuff could be a little fishy or whatever, and maybe that's a different concern for you. But where I live and the places that I've experienced in my life, I've never had a cop just ask me what's in my pocket, ever. And if they did, I wouldn't want to tell them. And that would lead down a different road there, but again, if they really insisted, then I'd go ahead and show them if everything is fine or whatever and they still want to arrest me, I'll play ball and I'll deal with that later uh, in courts and lawsuits. But anyway, so yeah, they're basically saying that you could conceal carry, open carry doesn't really matter, but you need a reason and self-defense is not a good reason. So this I thought was interesting because, you know, when I look up different knife laws, one thing I'm most concerned with is blade length, like the size of the knife. This is the biggest, like... I don't know, um, what's the word? Uh, wives tale, I guess? I don't, I don't know the term I'm looking for, but so many people will say, you can have a knife as long as it's less than four inch blade, and they do this with their hand, and they go, okay, well, you know, each finger's about an inch, and so as long as it's, uh, oh no, this is way, way more than four inches, so no, that's not allowed. That's stupid. Yes, some states do have a four inch blade limit, this thing, with, that means nothing at all. First of all, everyone's hand's different. Some people's hands are four inches wide. The fingers, some people it's three inches. Some people it's five inches. Just depends on your hand. So this is not a form of measurement, okay? And a cop is not going to do the same thing unless they're really stupid and they happen to live in a state that does have a four inch limit and they get a basic idea. This is clearly over four inches, not because of my fingers, just because I happen to know. This is a five and a half inch blade only because the blade is usually measured from the top of the handle to the tip of the knife. But that's something else if you are in a state and you are looking at different knife blade lengths and stuff. Legally, your blade does not have to be sharpened to be considered a blade. If you have a less than four inch blade limit, it does not matter if your blade is eight inches long, but only one inch is sharpened. That's not a one inch blade. The blade is not where it's sharp. The blade is the entire metal piece that sticks out of the handle. Okay, from the very top of this handle to the very tip of that blade. So I can argue that, well, the cutting edge is only five inches long, it doesn't matter. That's not the blade length. It's the entire thing. Doesn't matter if it's sharp or not. This is considered the blade because it is part of the blade. So anyway, uh, New Jersey does not seem to have any type of blade length limits or knife length limits unless you're selling to minors. Okay, so 2C39-9.1 here. Sale of a knife with a blade length over five inches or overall length of over 10 inches to a person under 18 is prohibited. So what that basically says is that if you're buying a knife, you have to be an adult, a legal adult of 18 years or older to buy larger knives. If you're a minor, you could still buy knives legally in the state of New Jersey as long as the blade is under five inches and the overall open length is under 10 inches, which is stupid. What does that make a difference? I have no idea. If you're a minor, I don't understand some laws sometimes like, okay, well listen, these are kids, they don't know what they're doing. So if you don't think they know what they're doing, why do you trust them with a 4.9 inch blade but not a 5.3 inch blade? How stupid is that? And what if they have a one inch blade but they want a, you know, a 30 inch handle? Who makes up these things? It's so stupid, so stupid. Anyway, all right, so conceal carrier went over conceal or concealment is not an issue under New Jersey state law and so forth. You can read some different court cases here which is really interesting too because uh, the New Jersey uh, Supreme Court was basically agreeing uh, in saying that, you know, knives are an extension of the Second Amendment. You know, the right to bear arms doesn't specifically mean firearms. Um, they agree in New Jersey that bearing arms is whatever weapon you need to defend your life. Uh, but then other places in the statute, uh, they talk about other things that just still has uh, prohibitations on stuff. So. Again, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not going to dive super deep into this, okay? If you want to talk to a lawyer and you live in New Jersey to figure out what you can have and what you can't, that's probably a good idea. Or you can just research yourself and make your own assumptions, which may or may not be right. So reading all that, um, and in the past, I've never really cared what type of knives I have in New Jersey. Because I don't carry my gun, I feel like that's already a, a huge win for the state. Um, and I, I just carry whatever I want in the way of knives. I don't really care because, again, my interactions with the police would be so incredibly rare. Although not impossible, I take that chance. 
But in this case, I decided to carry this uh, newer Voyager. Now this one here, of course, has the Vaquero blade on there, which I absolutely love, which bites ridiculously deep. Fantastic option for self-defense. I'll throw some quotes out there. Uh, because look, if I feel like my life is in danger, I don't care what the law is. I'm gonna do whatever I need to do to survive, and then I'll deal with that stuff later in court. Um, but this is my decision to carry this. I always carry a huge knife when I leave uh, the state of Pennsylvania. Um, sometimes even bigger than this, but this is the one I chose, and that's the one I carried. All right, do like the uh, the handle. I, I prefer some of the original Voyagers a lot more than this one. And this is a, a newer one with the squared off handle, but I don't think it's the newest. It does have a different um, you know logo and stuff. So I think when they first made the switch is when I got this one. But anyway, you can see very, very good grip here, or thanks to Lynn Thompson's um, <laughs> brain and design, and I'm sure some other influence as well. Uh, there's a secondary grip on the bottom here. You can see these two toils. So when you hold it like this, it's almost like a little gun grip. It is still ridiculously um, strong grip and extremely comfortable. And look at that reach here. All right, so from my hand, we probably have a seven or eight inch reach. Okay, that's crazy. With an extremely sharp, extremely effective blade profile. So God forbid I ever had to need this to survive. I'm sure I would do fairly well, but who knows? Anyway, so that was my knife choice for at least in the pocket because my pocket was empty. Uh, so I filled it with that big knife. I always carry neck knife. I don't care. I carry them everywhere, no matter what. And uh, my jersey trip, it turned out to be this fast pack by Rainier Knives. You guys have seen this before. Love this knife. Kind of going back and forth uh, for neck carry. I have some other ones I'm, I'm testing out as well. This is always a win for me. Anyway, at this point, I will remind you that I am not a lawyer and I am not in any way, um, you know, in a position to give sound legal advice. I'm just sharing my experiences, but I always have a neck knife uh, and I always believe that it's legal. That is true. So anyway, moving on, I did carry the um, King's Loot wallet. I just did a video on this not too long ago. Worked out beautifully. In this top pouch here, I actually carried my um, card for the hotel, okay? So this worked out really nice because they're all touch now, so you don't like slide it in or whatever, you just like touch it to the door. And because I carried it in this uh, top back pocket here, I was able to take the wallet out and just touch the wallet to the door and it read it through the leather, which is really nice. Anyway, as I mentioned uh, in the video on the wallet itself, um, when I was traveling, it's just an easier, smaller, lighter, simpler option. I didn't need to carry as much stuff. It worked out beautifully, paid cash the whole time. So next up here, I'm sure you guys are staring at this, like what is that thing? It's a little pill box. I got this from, I don't know, one of the nature store. I forget what even the name was, but I got this, God, in the 90s. I was in high school, uh, the beginning of high school, I think, and uh, I was just at the mall. And I went to one of those nature type stores or whatever. I saw two of these. I bought both of them. Uh, these are just little wood boxes with little slide tops, all right? I have this one as the bigger one. I have a smaller one. You see right now, I just have some Tylenol in there. Uh, whenever I travel, I always bring medicine. Uh, in this particular case, my dad rented a Dodge Charger, uh, which we went back and forth, you know, swapping, driving. I loved it. It was pretty cool. It was fun to, uh, you know, drive a, a Charger that's a rental. I didn't have to worry about fixing it. Um, and of course, my dad enjoyed driving as well. So we took turns driving. But um, because I was, I was carpooling, I didn't have all the luxuries that I always have in my car. I actually, that, that pillbox, which I'm going to do a separate video on because I have a lot of people asking because I post on Instagram. But my little, you know, like mobile pharmacy with all those pills and stuff, I usually have that in the car. In this case, I threw the whole thing in my luggage bag so that I had it the entire time. But, you know, to stop and get out and go through the trunk and, and get that out. And then it's just easier to carry pills on my person. All right. So I always do that. Something else to note, too, as far as uh, legality, I'm not concerned whatsoever. But I'm, I'm mentioning this in case you are ever in a position where you need to know this. But... Um, if you have any type of controls, okay, so if you take pain medicine or anything like that, you have to have the original bottle with the prescription and your name on it if you carry it in public. Like if you have, you know, codeine or anything like that that you know, people can abuse and get high on, you can't have them loose in a Ziploc bag, you can't have them loose in a box like this. You need to have your prescription bottle with your name on it so they, that if you got pulled over and officers uh, dealing with you, they know that you're supposed to have those. Now, they can look up pills anytime at all. It wouldn't be an issue if they asked me what this is. I'd say it's Tylenol. You can see the markings on it. You can Google it real quick and see that that is, in fact, Tylenol. Uh, but just saying, it's not really legal to carry loose pills most of the time. So just keep that in mind, specifically for controls. Um, and then, of course, I always have my, or I should say most of the time, I have my little uh, pocket organizer with 
various things. Um, always have to have a flashlight. In this case, I did not bring my keys. Don't forget, because I'm not driving my car, so I'd have all my doodads on my keys and stuff. So had to have a flashlight, had extra uh, batteries in my bag just in case this died. Always have the Fisher Space Pen, and of course a lighter. This is the Douglas S lighter. All right, I've done videos on this before, if you haven't seen it before, but extremely well-made Japanese lighter, which I love. So yeah, that is uh, pretty much it. Oh, also my cell phone, of course. And the only thing that's not here is my Apple Watch. That is the watch I chose to wear the entire time I was gone. And right now it's charging, okay? So that's why you're not looking at it. Um, I, I love the Apple Watch, I, I really, really do. Sometimes I still swap with my traditional watches just because I like them. I know some guys wear two watches. You know, I've seen that many times where they'll wear an Apple Watch to do all their, you know, phone stuff and computer stuff and then they'll have an actual regular watch on the other hand. I don't know, I've never done that before. Maybe I'll try it out in the future. Um, it seems redundant, but sometimes you just like a watch and look at the time real quick. Not to say you can't do that on a, uh, you know, an Apple Watch, you can just look at it real quick. Every time you move, the screen comes on, right? Uh, it's just one of those things. Some dudes still like, you know, wearing their regular watches. I don't know. I don't know if I get down with the double watch thing. Probably not, but I'll try it out in the future. But So anyway, uh, I really did enjoy the trip. We actually met up with some other family and friends. Uh, the first day, my mom met up with an ex-coworker. Such a wonderful, wonderful woman. We all went out to dinner together. And then the next day, we met up with my uh, aunt and uncle, which we do not see very often. Uh, they were coming back from uh, a trip as well in, in Jersey, so we met them up for lunch. So it was, overall, it was just great. It was a lot of family stuff. Uh, again, Christina got to uh, see a lot of, you know, where my parents grew up and where I grew up, and it was just fun. It was a really nice trip, and, and it was very purposeful. But I did want to share what I brought with me on my EDC. I kept it real simple. There's all kinds of other stuff I, I could have brought. I could have brought, you know, a separate Zippo and... You know different types of uh, pens and all kinds of things i keep so much stuff in my car but i have to again be uh mindful that when i'm traveling with someone else i'm not traveling with my car if i have to go to an airport and fly somewhere i don't have that stuff in my car i'm just so used to having it available i have what i have in my pockets all the time but you know whatever you don't see here you're like hey dude you should probably have this or that or this thing oh i always I carry a hanky as well uh, i should have mentioned that i should have shown it on camera but i said it before i always have a handkerchief in all of my uh, trips every time I leave the house I have a handkerchief unless I'm just in like basketball shorts in that case the trip is usually within an hour and extremely local so I don't bring a hanky in that case but anytime I'm actually putting on like cargo shorts cargo pants jeans whatever I always have a handkerchief in the back pocket anyway just a video on the subject of uh, traveling with gear interstate it's good to always abide by those laws wherever you're going to be um, you know my, my Pennsylvania carry permits good in a ton of states but unfortunately not the ones around me. <laughs> so New York State, obviously we saw the news, uh, that will be changing, who knows what the details are yet, but eventually I'd love to get a New York carry permit uh, for the state. Um, New Jersey, that probably will never happen unless you know it goes the way of how New York did, but you know the, uh, the details remain to be seen on that. Now as far as Connecticut, I can get a carry permit there, I just haven't gone through the process yet. Um, it is timely and costly. It's several hundred dollars, you know, at the end of the day. And I believe I have to take some classes there and stuff. I have to take specific trips there to take those classes, which is a lot of money and gas and all that kind of stuff. Um, I like to eventually do it. I just don't go to Connecticut as often as I would like. I, I mean, all my in-laws are in Connecticut. I'd love to go there more often. It's just as my schedule is right now, and Christina's schedule, it just makes it harder to get there. Um, so it just, I can't justify spending hundreds of dollars to get a carry permit for how often we go now. But again, in the future, I'd love to be able to go there more, uh, and in which case I would get the, the carry permit. Anyway, that's all for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have an awesome day, and I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.